Mr. Vasha, PhD History. I am going to present NCERT Class 11th History Chapter 10 Paths to Modernization China and Japan. Here we have the China, this is China and this one is Japan. These two countries we are going to learn today. Both China and Japan. China is the largest country in terms of population. Japan is an island nation. Japan is towards the eastern side of China. This is China is a very big country. This one is Japan, group of islands, but four islands are very, very important among them. Hokkaido, Kyushu, Kyushu and uh, Shiko. These are the four important islands of uh, Japan that we are going to discuss in this chapter. This is China and this one is Japan. Introduction of China. China and Japan present a marked physical contrast. China is a very vast continental country that spans many climatic zones the core is dominated by three major river systems, the Yellow River, Yangtze, the Yangtze River, Chongjiang. The third largest river in the world is Yangtze and the Pearl River. A large part of the country is mountainous. The dominant ethnic group are the Han and the major language is Chinese, Putonghua, but there are many other nationalities such as the Uyghur, Hui, Manchu, and Tibetan, and aside from dialects such as Cantonese, Yu, and Shanghanese, Wu, there are other minority languages spoken as well in China. So hence China is a multilingual country, though the Chinese Mandarin is the major language. Chinese food reflects this regional diversity with at least four distinct types. The best known is Southern or Cantonese cuisine as most overseas Chinese come from the Canton area which includes dim sum, literally touch your heart, an assortment of pastries and dumplings. In the north, wheat is the staple food while in Sichuan, spices brought by Buddhist monks in the ancient period along the Silk Road, which is the Silk Road developed in China, and chilies by Portuguese traders in the 15th century have created a fiery cuisine. In eastern China, both rice and wheat are eaten. This is the part of China which is known as Manchuria. This is also where we have seen the noodles and Manchuria food is derived. This is the Japan, four important islands we have already covered. Japan, by contrast, is a string of islands. Islands is nothing but all sides of what? The four largest being Honshu, Kyushu, Shikoku, and Hokkaido. The Okinawa chain is the southernmost about the same latitude as the Bahamas in Latin America. More than 50% of the land area of the main island is mountainous and Japan is situated in a very active earthquake zone. These geographical conditions have influenced architecture. The population is largely Japanese but there are a small Ainu minority and Koreans who were forcibly brought as laborer when Korea was a Japanese colony in the year 1910. Japan lacks a tradition of animal rearing. Rice is the staple crop and fish is the major source of protein in Japan. Raw fish that is sashimi or sushi has now become a widely popular dish 
around the world as it is considered very healthy and Japanese used to take it. Japan, the political system. An emperor had ruled Japan from Kyoto, but by the 12th century, the imperial court lost power to shoguns who in theory ruled the, in the name of emperor. It means emperor was a puppet and shoguns were the de facto de jure ruler. From 1603 to 1867, members of the Tokugawa family held the positions of shogun. Tokugawa family people held the post of shogun during this year from 1603 to 1867. The country was divided into over 250 domains under the rule of lords called Daimyo. The shogun exercised power over the dominal lords, ordering them to stay at the capital Edo, that is the modern Tokyo, for long periods so that they would not pose any threat to them. He also controlled the major cities and mines. The samurai, the warrior class, were the ruling elite and served the shoguns and daimyo. For both of them, the samurais are the warrior class. They are serving for shoguns as well as the daimyo. Daimyo is the head of the domain. There were 250 domains like in India. We have 28 states. In Japan, there were 250 domains in the 17th and 18th century. This is a daimyo, shogun. Japan, Tokyo is the capital. It is the old name of Tokyo is Edo. Kyoto is the first capital. These are samurais. Samurais are fighting here. See how they dress, costumes, and then the weapons they carry. And in the late 8th, 16th century, three changes led the pattern of future development. One, the peasantry was disarmed and only the samurai could carry swords. Still, the samurai became very powerful. Peasantry were carrying the swords. This ensured peace and order, ending the frequent wars of the previous century. Two, the daimyo were ordered to live in the capital of the domains, each with a large degree of autonomy. Third, Land survey identified owners and taxpayers and graded land productivity to ensure a stable revenue base for the empire. The daimyo's capital became bigger so that by the mid 17th century, Japan not only had the most populated city in the world, Edo, but also two other large cities, Osaka and Kyushu, and at least half a dozen castle towns. Castle towns means uh, the towns which are full of castle. That is, you can say the large buildings, churches and other important uh, monuments with population of over 50,000. This led to the growth of a commercial economy and created a financial and credit system. A person's merit began to be more valued than his status. A vibrant culture blossomed. The towns were a fast-growing class of merchants, patronized theatre and the arts. As people enjoyed reading, it became possible for a gifted writer to earn a living solely by writing. This is the legislature parliament of Japan called Daid. This is a beautiful building. The concept of Daid parliament they have taken from Germany. Japan was considered rich because it imported luxury goods like silk from China and textiles from India. They took steps to develop the silk industry in Nishijin in Kyoto so as to reduce imports because they have to pay a lot of foreign exchange. Paying for these imports with gold and silver strained the economy and led the Tokugawa to put restrictions on the export of precious metals and intellectual changes such as the study of ancient Japanese literature 
led people to question the degree of Chinese influence in Japan. So they, they want to put full stop for the Chinese influence in Japan. They wanted to curtail the imports from China. They wanted to produce within the country. The Meso restoration. Internal discontent coincided with the demands for trade and diplomatic relations. In 1853, the USA sent Commodore Matthew Perry, who lived between 1794 to 1858, to Japan to demand that the government sign a treaty that would permit trade and open diplomatic relations, which it did the following year. Japan lay on the route to China, which the USA saw a major market also there. Walling ship in the Pacific needed a place to refuel. At that time, there was only on Western country that traded with Japan, Holland, the only country in Holland that is a European country which traded with the Japan. Perry's arrival had an important effort effect on Japanese politics. The emperor, who till then had little political power, now re-emerged as an important figure in 1868, a moment for forcibly removed the shogun from power and brought the emperor to Edo. This was made the capital and renamed as Tokyo, which means Eastern capital. This is a Paris ship, a Japanese woodblock print, which was developed by, you can say, the uh, this with the NCT printing technique adopted by Chinese, borrowed by Japan. This Perry, Robert Perry. The Missy government launched a policy with the slogan. Fukoku, Kyuhi, rich country, strong on wind. They realized that they needed to develop their economy and build a strong on wind. Otherwise, they would face the prospect of being a subjugated like India. To do this, they needed to create a sense of nationhood amongst the people and to transform subjects into citizens. The Japanese emperor and uh, posing like a uh, Western trust. At the same time, the new government also worked to build what they called the emperor system, emperor given greater status. Japanese scholars use this term as the emperor was part of a system along with bureaucracy and the military that exercised power. Officials were sent to study the European monarchies on which they planned to model their own. The emperor would be treated with reverence as he was considered a direct descendant of the sun goddess, but he was also shown as the leader of westernization. His birthday became a national holiday in Japan. He wore western style military uniforms and edicts were issued in his name to set up modern institutions. The imperial rescript on education of 1890 urged people to pursue learning, advance public good and promote common interest. Schooling in Japan A new school system began to be built from the 1870s in Japan. Schooling was made compulsory for boys and girls and by 1910 almost universal universal means now in India also we have RTE tutoring which has universalized education up to 14 years of both boys and girls. Tuition fees were minimum. The curriculum had been based on western models back by the 1770s. While emphasizing modern ideas, stress was placed on loyalty and the study of Japanese culture, Japanese heritage. The Ministry of Education exercised control over the curriculum and in the selection of textbooks as well as teacher training. What was called moral culture had to be taught and text urged children to 
their parents be loyal to the nation and became good citizens. This is a part of the education. This is the Japanese script, which is resembling like a Chinese script, script of Japan. The Japanese had borrowed their written script from the Chinese in the 6th century itself. However, since their language is very different from the Chinese, they developed two phonetic alphabets, Hiragana and Katakana. Hiragana is considered feminine because it was used by many women writers in the Heian period, such as Murasaki. It's written using a mixture of Chinese characters and phonetics so that the main part of the world is written with a character. For instance, is going go would be written with the character and the ing in phonetics. To integrate the nation, the busy government imposed a new administrative structure by altering old village and domain system that were existing since the memorial and the administrative unit had to have revenue adequate to maintain the local schools and health facilities and also to maintain the defense and army as well as to serve a recruitment center for the military. All young men over 20 had to do a period of military service. The modern military force was developed during the Mizi period, a legal system was set up to regulate the formation of political groups, control the holding of meetings and impose strict censorship. In all these measures, the government had to face opposition that is nature everywhere. The military and the bureaucracy were put under the direct command of the emperor. Modernizing the economy of Japan. Another important part of the BC reforms was the modernization of the economy. Funds were raised by levying an agricultural tax. Japan's first railway line between Tokyo and the port of Yokohama was built in 1870-72, but the first railway line of the world was built in England. And in India, it was built in 1853 between Thane and Mumbai. Textile machinery was imported from Europe and foreign technicians were employed to train workers as well as to teach in universities and schools. And Japanese students were sent abroad to get good higher education. In 1872, modern banking institutions were launched in Japan Companies like Mitsubishi and Sumitomo were helped through subsidies and tax benefits to become major shipbuilders so that Japanese trade was from now carried in Japanese ships. Jiba Tsu Business organizations controlled by individual families dominated the economy till after the Second World War also. The population was 35 million in 1872. It was increased to 55 million in 1920. Within Japan, there was a shift to towns and industry. As industry developed by 1925, 21% of the population lived in the cities by 1935. This figure had gone up to 32%, that is 22.5 million. But today, and more than 50% Japanese population live in the towns and cities. Industrial workers. The number of people in manufacturing increased from 7 lakhs in 1870 to 4 million, that is 40 lakhs in 1930. Most of them worked in units employing less than 5 people and using neither machinery nor electric power. It means they are working in the cottage industry, that is the handicraft industry, that the things are made by the hand without the machinery. Over half of those employed in modern factories were women and it was women who organized the first modern strike in 1886 in the world that is in Japan. After 1900, the number of men began to increase but only in the 1930s did male workers begin to outnumber women. The size of the factories also began to increase in due course of time. Factories employing more than 100 workers just over 
1000 in 1909 but it jumped to over 4000 by the 1930 at even in 1940 there were over 5 lakh 50000 workshops that employed less than 5 employees it means still handicrafts were there the rapid and unregulated growth of industry and the demand for natural resources such as timber led to the environmental destruction in japan tanaka shoujo elected to the first house of representatives launched the first agitation against industrial pollution that erupted in japan in 1897 with 800 villages in a mass protest forcing the government to take action to control pollution this is aggressive nationalism aggressive nationalism means extreme nationalism like hitler and mussolini in germany and italy miso construction constitution was based on a restricted franchise it means limited franchise voting and created a diet the japanese use the term board for parliament because of the influence of german legal ideas and with limited powers the leaders who brought about the imperial restoration continued to exercise power and even established political parties between 1918 and 1931 popularly elected prime ministers formed cabinets in japan thereafter they lost power to a nation unity cabinets formed across party lines the emperor was the commander of the forces and from 1890 this was interpreted to mean that the army and the navy had independent control without emperor's involvement in 1899 the prime minister ordered that only serving generals and admirals could become ministers serving general means for army admirals for a civilian navy this strengthening of the military together with the expansion of japan's colonial empire was connected with the fear that japan was at the mercy of the western powers this fear was used to silence opposition to military expansion and to higher taxes to fund the armed forces in japan westernizations and traditions successive generations of japanese intellectuals had different views on japan's relations with other countries to some the usa and western european countries were at the highest point of civilization to which japan aspired fukuzawa yukichi a leading mizi intellectual expressed this by saying that japan must expel asia the philosopher miyake Chetsuri 1868-1945 argued that each nation must develop its special talents in the interest of world civilization to devote oneself to one's own country is to devote oneself to the world by contrast many intellectuals were attracted to western liberalism and wanted a japan based not on the military but on democracy yuki emori who lived between 1857 to 1892 a leader of the popular right movement in japan was demanding constitutional government admired the french revolutions doctrine of the natural rights of man and popular sovereignty that supreme power and spoke for a liberal education that would develop each individual freedom is more precious than order others even advocated voting rights for women this pressure led the government to announce a constitution in japan daily life in japan japan's transformation into a modern society can be seen also in the changes in everyday life the patriarchal household system that is the head of the family is father comprised many generations living together under the control of the head of the house but as more people became affluent new ideas of family spread in japan the new home homo as the japanese say using the english word was that of the nuclear family that is small family where wife and husband their children live where husband and wife lived 
and breadwinner and homemaker. This new concept of domestic domesticity in turn generated demands for new types of domestic goods, new types of family entertainments and new forms of housing in Japan. In the 1920s, construction companies made cheap housing available for a down payment of 200 yen. Yen is the currency of Japan and a monthly installment of 12 yen, 12 yen for 10 years. This at a time when the salary of a bank employee, a person with higher education, was 40 yen per month. Overcoming modernity. State-centered nationalism found full expression in the 1930s and 1940s as Japan launched wars to extend its empire in China and other parts of Asia. A war that emerged into the Second World War after Japan attacked the USA at Pearl Harbor in Pacific Ocean. This period saw greater control on society. The represent, repression and imprisonment of dissidents as well as the formation of patriotic society, many of them women's organizations to support the war. An influential symposium on overcoming modernity in 1943 debated the dilemma facing Japan of how to combat the West while being a modern Japanese musician. Suboro posed the question of how to rescue music from the art of sensory stimulation and restore in to an art of the spirit. He was not rejecting Western music but trying to find a way that went beyond merely rewriting or playing Japanese music on Western instruments. The philosophy Nisho Taki Kichi defined modern as the unity of threat streams of Western thought, the Renaissance, the Protestant Reformation and the rise of natural sciences. He argued that Japan's moral energy, a term taken from the German philosopher Ranke, had helped it to escape colonization and it was its duty to establish a new world order, a greater East Asia. For this, a new vision that would integrate science and religion was very, very necessary in Japan. This is China. Chinese debates were marked by the views of three groups, the early reformers such as Kong Yu V, who was born in 1858 and died in 1927, or Liang Qichao, who was born in 1873 died in 1949, tried to use traditional ideas in new and different ways to meet the challenges posed by the West. Second, Republican revolutionaries such as Sun Yat Sen, the first president of the Republic, were inspired by ideas from Japan and the West. The third, the Communist Party of China, that is CCP, Communist Party of China, wanted to end age old inequalities and drive out the foreigners from the Chinese soil. Above all, many felt that traditional ways of thinking had to be changed. Confucianism developed from the teachings of Confucius and his disciples was concerned with good conduct, practical wisdom and proper social relationship. To train people in modern subjects, students were sent to study in Japan, Britain and France and bring back new ideas. Many Chinese students went to Japan in the 1890s. They not only brought back new ideas, but many became leading Republicans in China. The modern history of China has revolved around the question of how to regain sovereignty, that is supreme power led by the Chinese, and end the humiliation of foreign occupation and bring about equality and development. Chinese debates were marked by the view of these 
three groups the early reformers such as kong yu vi or liang qi chao try to use traditional ideas in new and different ways to meet the challenges posed by the western countries second republican revolutionaries such as sun yat sen the first president of the republic was inspired by ideas of japan and the west the third the communist party of china ccp wanted to end the age old inequalities and drive out the foreigners from chinese soil the sun yat sen the first president of the republic of china and who was highly influenced by japan establishing the republic by sun yat sen the manchu empire was overthrown and a republican government was established in china in 1911 under sun yat sen who was born in 1866 died in 1925 is anonymously regarded as the founder of modern china he came from a poor family and studied in missionary schools where he was introduced to democracy and christianity he studied medicine but was greatly concerned about the fate of china his program was called the three principles san min chui these were nationalism this means overthrowing the manchu empire who were seen as a foreign dynasty as well as other foreign imperialist democracy or establishing democratic government and socialism regulating capital and equalizing land holdings the social and political situation continued to be unstable in china even after the formation of republic on 4th may 1919 an angry demonstration was held in beijing to protest against the decision of the post war peace conference despite being an ally of the victorious side led by britain china did not get back the territories seized from it the protest became a movement it galvanized a whole generation to attack tradition and to call for saving china through modern science democracy and nationalism revolutionaries called for driving out the foreign nurse from the chinese soil who were controlling the country's resources and to remove inequalities and reduce poverty in china that was their ambition they advocated reforms such as the use of simple language in writing abolishing the practice of foot binding and sub subordination of women equality in marriage and economic development to end poverty in china after the republican revolution the country entered a period of turmoil the gomindong the national people's party and the ccp emerged as major forces striving to unite the country and bring a stability sun yat sen's ideas became the basis of the political philosophy of the gomindong party they identified four greatest needs as clothing food housing and transportation are very very essential for human being that's why they focused and emphasized on these four great needs the next important leader of the gomindong party after sunya sen is shang kai shek shang kai shek who was born in 1887 died in 1975 after the death of sunya sen shang kai shek emerged as the leader of the gomindong party as he launched a military campaign to control the war lords in china regional leaders who had usurped authority and to eliminate the communist he was a strong opponent of communist he advocated a secular and a rational this worldly confucianism but also sought to militarize the nation the people he said must develop a habit and instinct for an unified behavior he encouraged women to cultivate the four virtues of chastity appearance speech and work and recognized their role as confined to household even the length 
of hemlines was prescribed the going longs social base was in urban areas not in rural areas industrial growth was slow and limited and in cities such as shanghai which became the centers of modern growth by 1990 an industrial working class had appeared numbering 5 lakhs social and cultural changes was helped along by the spread of schools and universities peking university was established in the year 1902 journalism flourished reflecting the growing attraction of this new thinking in china under shang kai shek the rise of the communist party of china with the japanese invaded when the japanese invaded china in 1937 the gomingdongs retreated so they have left they were given taken back the long and exhausting war weakened chinese prices rose 30% per month between 1945 and 1949 and utterly destroyed the lives of ordinary people rural china faced two crises one ecological with soil exhaustion and deforestation and floods and the second a socio economic one caused by the exploitative land tenure system in debtedness primitive technology and poor communication the ccp had been launched and founded in 1921 soon after the russian revolution that is after 1970 the russian success exercised a powerful influence around the world and leaders such as lenin and stalin trotsky went to went down to establish the comintern the communist international or the third international in march 1918 to help bring about a world government that would end exploitation the comintern that is communist international short form is comintern and the soviet union supported communist parties around the world but they worked within the traditional marxist understanding that revolution would be brought about by the working class in cities its initial appeal across national boundaries was immense but it soon became a tool for soviet interest and was dissolved in 1943 Mao Zedong who was born in 1893 and died in 1976 who emerged as the major CCP Chinese Communist Party leader took different path by passing his revolutionary program on the peasantry his success made the CCP a powerful political force that ultimately won against the Kuomintang and formed the communist government in China Mao Zedong is a Mao Zedong's radical approach can be seen in Jiangxi in the mountains where they camped from 1928 to 1934 secure the Kuomintang's attacks a strong peasants council soviet was organized united through confiscation and redistribution of land Mao Mao Maoist also the highly influenced by the mao's ideas he the mao and like other leaders stressed the need for an independent government and norm he had become aware of women's problems and supported the emergence of rural women's associations promulgated a new marriage law that forbade arranged marriages stopped purchase or sale of marriage contracts and employed divorce the communist voice in the flock establishing the new democracy in china 1949 the communist government was established in china 1949 to 65 is the first phase of communist government in china the people's republic of china government china government was established in the year 1949 so this is the next important country after russia to become a communist nation it was based on the principles of the new democracy an alliance of all social classes unlike the dictatorship of the proletariat that the soviet union said it had established 
critical areas of the economy were put under government control and private enterprise and private ownership of land were gradually ended. This program lasted till 1953 when the government declared that it would launch a program of socialist transformation. The Great Leap Forward Movement launched in the year 1958 was a policy to galvanize the country to industrialize rapidly. People were encouraged to set up steel furnaces in their backyards. In the rural areas, people's communes where land would be collectively owned and cultivated by all peasants were started by 1958. There were 26,000 communes covering 98% of the farm population. Mao was able to mobilize masses to attain the goal set by the Communist Party in China. His concern was with creating socialist man who would have five loves, fatherland, people, labor, science and public property. Mass organization were created for farmers, women, students and other groups. For instance, the All China Democratic Women's Federation had 76 million members and the All China Students Federation had 3.29 million members. These objectives and methods did not appeal to everyone in party. 1953-54, some were urging for more attention to industrial organization and economic growth in China. Leo Sahoji, who was born in 1886, died in 1969, and Deng Xiaoping, who was born in 1904 and died in 1997, tried to modify the commune system as it was not working efficiently in China. The steel produced in the backward furnaces was unusable industrially. Conflicts visions Between 1965 to 1978, this is a phase of conflict in China. The conflict between the Maoist wanting to create a socialist man and those who objected to his emphasis on ideology rather than expertise culminated in Mao launching the great proletarian literarian cultural revolution in 1965 to counter his Christ. critics. The Red Gods, mainly students and the army, was used for a campaign against old culture and customs and old habits. Students and professionals were sent to the countryside to learn from the masses. Ideology, being communist party, was more important than having professional knowledge in China. Denunciation and slogans replaced national debate. The Cultural Revolution began a period of turmoil, weakened the party, that is Communist Party, and severely disrupted the economy and education system. From the late 1960s, the tide began to turn in China. In 1975, the party once again laid emphasis on greater social discipline and the need to build an industrial economy so that China could become a powerful before the end of the century. Today, China is number two, uh, you can say the position in GDP of Africa because of its industrial development. Reforms from 1978. The Cultural Revolution was followed by a process of political manuring. Deng Xiaoping kept party control strong while introducing a socialist markets economy in China. In 1978, the party declared its goal as the four modernizations to develop science, industry, agriculture, and defense. These are the main goals of CCP from 1978. Debate was allowed as long as the party was not questioned. Once you are not questioned, then debate can be done. In this new and liberating climate, as at the time of many May 4th movement, 60 years earlier, 
there was an exciting explosion of new ideas in China. 5th December 1978, a wall poster, the fifth modernization, proclaimed that without democracy, the other modernization would come to nothing. It went on to criticize the CCP for not solving their problem of poverty or ending sexual exploitation in China, even citing cases of such abuse from within the party. These demands were suppressed but in 1989, on the 17th anniversary of May 4th moment, many intellectuals called for a greater openness and an end to the ossified dogmas that is Suha Juri. Students' demonstration at Tiananmen Square in Beijing were brutally repressed. This was strongly condemned around the world. The story of Taiwan. Shang Kai-shek defeated by the CCP flat in 1949 to Taiwan, which was known as Formosa before 1949, which, which had, uh, which with over US $300 million in gold reserves and crates of priceless art treasures and established the Republic of China. Taiwan had been a Japanese colony since the Chinese ceded it after 1894-95 war with Japan. The Cairo Declaration, which was held in 1943, and the Post-Dam Proclamation, which held in 1949, restored sovereignty to China. The GMD Guomindang Party under Chiang Kai-shek went on to establish a repressive government for forbidding free speech and political opposition and excluding the local population from positions of power. However, they carried out land reforms that increased agricultural productivity and modernized the economy so that by 1973, Taiwan had a second only GNP, second only to that of Japan in Asia. The economy, largely dependent on the trade, has been steadily growing, but what is important is that the gap between the rich and the poor has been steadily declined. In Even more dramatic has been the transformation of Taiwan in a democracy. It began slowly after the death of Shang Kai-shek in 1975 and grew in momentum when martial law was lifted in 1987 and opposition parties were legally permitted in Taiwan from 1987 onwards. The first free elections began the process of bringing local Taiwanese to power. Diplomatically, most countries have the only trade missions in Taiwan, full diplomatic relations and M. Embassies are not possible as Taiwan is considered to be part to China. The question of reunification with the mainland remains a contentious issue, but cross-strait relations that is between Taiwan and China have been improving and Taiwanese trade and investment in the mainland or massive and Travel has also become easier because Taiwan is one of the most aggressive economic power in Asia. Once the China um, gets a hold on Taiwan, then it would emerge as the largest economy in the world. Two roads to modernization. The history of Japan and China shows how different historical conditions led them on widely divergent path to building independent and modern nations in their respective countries. Japan was successful in retaining its independence and using traditional skills and practices in new ways. However, its elite-driven modernization, generate and aggressive nationalism helped to sustain a repressive regime that shift that uh, stifled dissent and demands for democracy and established a colonial empire that left a legacy of hatred in the region as well as distorted internal developments. 
Japan program of modernization was carried out in an environment dominated by Western imperial powers in Japan. While it imitated them, it also attempted to find its own solution. Japanese nationalism was marked by these different compulsions while many Japanese hoped to liberate Asia from Western domination for other, others. These ideas justified building an empire for Japan. It's important to note that the transformation of social and political institutions and daily life was not just a question of reviving traditions or tenaciously preserving them, but rather of creating creatively using them in new and different ways. For instance, the Meiji school system, modern and European and American practices, introduced new subjects, but the curriculum's main objective was to make loyal citizens of Japan. A course on morals that stressed loyalty to the emperor was compulsory and they have given more emphasis on ethical, moral, and humanitarian values. Similarly, changes in the family or in daily life shows how foreign and indigenous ideas were brought together to create something new. The Chinese path to moderation was very different from that of Japan. Foreign imperialism, both Western and Japanese, combined with a hesitant and unsure Qing dynasty to weaken government control and set the stage for a breakdown of political and social order, leading to immense misery for most of the people. Warlordism, banditry, and civil war exacted a heavy toll on human lives, as did the as did as of the Japanese invasion, natural disasters added to this burden. The 19th and 20th centuries saw reject, rejection of traditions, of, of traditions and a search for ways to build national unity and strength in Japan. The CCP and its supporters fought to put an end to traditions which they saw as keeping the masses in poverty, the women subjugated and our country undeveloped. Thank you so much for your patient hearing.